Welcome to Exploring the Mystical Side of Life with your host, Michelle Aubin and Linda Lang. Hi, this is Linda Lang from ThoughtChange.com, and I'm here today with Flora Elmore, the good luck lady. I'm so excited to have her as a guest. Today, she is going to talk to us about luck. Welcome, Flora. Hi, Linda. Thank you so much for having me. I actually think it's good luck having you on our program. Well, good. I hope so. I hope that everybody that's listening in gets better luck as the day goes on. I always had the tagline, your luck just got better. Anytime you have contact with me, your luck just gets better. I actually believe that because I know how big of a heart center you have. And the heart is very transformative. Everybody wants more good luck in their life. Maybe the first thing to do would be to actually define what you mean by good luck. All right. Good luck is having the strong ties that bind you to opportunity. It gives you the ability to see opportunity when it's there. It's the ability to pull on things that were in your ancestors' bloodline and all the good luck that they had, they pass on to you. It is the ability to say yes. It's a lot of little things, but it, most of the time, it's the ability to see the opportunity and say yes. Some, a lot of people equate it with intuition, but it's more than that. Because we always have intuition about different things, like this is a bad place, I have to get out of here, or this is a good thing, I should say yes. But most of the time, people don't say yes. They just acknowledge it and go on with their life. I think that it's really interesting that people associate it with intuition. I've often thought of luck as being in the flow, having synchronicity, having that creative inspiration. But I guess it could be both, really. It is. I, I agree. It could be both because I do see synchronicity. There are things that trigger good luck and they are synchronistic. Uh, when my clients will call me and tell me they see like 333 or 111 or 1111, I'll say, oh, that's good. That's a sign that you're syncing up with what you're wanting to do, like whatever your goals are. And so I encourage them to keep asking for that. Keep showing me signs whenever they're first getting started with working on their luck. But it's more than that. For me, intuition, it goes a lot deeper. But it is, it is about knowing when to say yes when those opportunities show up. And sometimes that is intuitive. And sometimes it is synchronicity, like you said. I do work with those folks who are gamblers, even though that's not what the luck work is about. It's about working with your ancestors. And it's about working with your own abilities, not just to say yes, but you have to build it up over time. Luck isn't just something that comes and goes. And you can have a run on bad luck. That's not off because I have met people who that's happened to, because a big trauma will throw your luck off. A car accident will throw luck off, or a divorce. I've watched that happen. A lot of women will swear up and down that a divorce was the worst decision because they had a run on bad luck. And it's really about them having to shift their consciousness because they've just changed. They've unplugged from another person's luck and that energy, and they're having to go and figure it out on their own again and tap into something that's back in their family. A lot of times people, when they get married and they spend years together, they get so intermingled with each other's energy and luck that whenever they break off of it, they have to reconnect with their family ties and their, their history and pick back up on that and tap back into it and stop trying to make it so much about those two people all the time. One of the things that popped in while you were talking would be, do you think that part of people's perception of bad luck when they have a trauma or divorce, do you think that part of the bad luck might have to do with attachment to either being a victim or to whatever happened to them? Sometimes, yes. When I start working with somebody, I really get into, I, ha, I, am, I have this diagnostic that I work with in my mind. I'll kind of go through it kind of quickly. When I'm looking at somebody and they come to me and they're like, man, I'm having a run on bad luck. And I think it's because I've been cursed. I get that a lot. I'm like, oh, well, okay. I do believe in the evil eye. I've had that happen to me. And 
I'll tell that story in a little bit, but whenever they tell me they think they've been cursed, usually they can relate it to an event and they saw something else in that day or something happened in that day that triggered this. And then they started on some kind of weird negative spiral that just has been perpetuating after that. But a lot of times, like if they lose their paycheck, the, I get this a lot with people, they'll either lose their paycheck or lose their job. And then bad luck just seems to follow them after that. And that bad event is the trigger for the rest of it. And I'll have to say, that wasn't it. That wasn't it. It's actually your fear of instability. That's what's triggering the bad luck. It's your insecurity or your rigidity of change. You're so afraid to change because you've been in this job for so long. The universe said, no, it's time to be done. And now you're terrified and you're attracting all this fear. And you just get these blinders that you can't see that opportunity. Sometimes people will be in a relationship and they're too shy to express their true feelings. So they play these games about, well, I'm not going to answer him back on Facebook for 20 minutes because I don't want him to think I'm desperate <laughs> or, or jealousy. Oh gosh, jealousy is definitely a luck killer because it's envy and it's seeing what everybody else has, but I don't have that. And people can have money jealousy and they have luck jealousy and job jealousy. That'll really kill it because they get those blinders on again and all of that jealousy is fear that I'm not good enough to have those things. I'm not good enough. So I have to push it off onto other people and be jealous of them. People that can't have boundaries, like they give too much information on Facebook <laughs> or they have apathy. Something has happened. And I know that that's the root of where their luck problems are at is in their apathy. And they'll also have addictions. A lot of times addictions are in that. And I can figure out, oh, why are, where are your boundaries at? Why don't you have, you know, some personal boundaries, but also where's the apathy? People that have problems trapped in grief or paranoia, or they get in this loop of just thinking this one outcome has to happen. That's a trigger for me to go, oh, I know where this luck problem's at. And it's actually in their extrasensory perceptions. And we start talking about their five senses and stepping outside of themselves and working on their, their other senses to help build their luck back up. And then low self-esteem or self-inflicted limitations, that's a luck killer too. Like we make up all these rules for ourselves. If we're truly spiritual beings, we must meditate or we must eat certain food. We have to be vegan. Oh God, we have to be vegan if we're going to be spiritual beings. Or, you know, we set up these really weird rules that we have to live by and we fail at them constantly. And there's weird guilt that goes with that. And so all of those things just kind of push people's luck to the side. And if people would just just lifting the personal shame from breaking all their rules all the time. If they would just release that shame and stuff, they would find that their luck is fantastic and opportunity constantly is showing up. And I realized that luck touches every single thing. Earlier you said uh, sometimes people just need to go back and connect with their origin, their ancestors, their birth family. What if their ancestry seemed to have a pattern of bad luck? Well, I see that. I see where that comes from. Like sometimes Native Americans, you would think, oh gosh, genocide and Jewish folks. Yes, I see that. And then we see people that were very uh, in certain parts of Russia that ended up being sent to Siberia. And you think, oh my God, my family's luck is horrible. That was infliction of society upon them. And so the family actually created luck rituals probably to protect themselves. Like they might say, our family never eats that on Friday. Well, why? Because it's bad luck. Well, what we really find out is, is that they had run out of food on Fridays, and so nobody ate on Fridays. And, and so they just would say it's bad luck for us to do that, to keep everyone from feeling bad about not having something. And then family will have jewelry that they pass down and talismans to pass down to help bring good luck to the family. And that was to counteract bad things that were happening to them. Whenever I was starting this work and really focusing on on luck work with people i got to looking at some of those patterns and what our our ancestors give to us and there's a lot of the people who really focus on luck in the world the chinese the germans the northern scandinavians russians indigenous mexican people or south american people they have concepts of luck and all of it begins in the womb right about the time your fingerprints begin to form in the dermoglyphs on your hands. The belief is that your ancestors come in and they give the best of themselves into you. 
they give you resilience. So when society throws bad luck at you, you just keep on going. They give you a sense of survival, but they also give you their laughter and their smile and things that are going to lift you up. So you, every child is born with a little pot of luck, right? You know, it's that little pot of gold that the leprechauns have. We all get a portion of it and there's enough to go around. And what we do with it, using meditation, using skills that we, we obtain from our own spiritual practices, it builds that luck and makes us stronger people. But when you don't do that on a consistent basis, you begin to lose it. And so when you do see those ancestors who had horrible luck, what you do see is you see them mm -hmm. sticking together and you see them passing on their traditions because that does give them luck. That does give them resilience and they're better people. They share that wisdom. So they're the history bearers, I think, in a lot of ways. But it's not so much that they had the bad luck, it's that society did something to them. And they learned luck techniques to keep themselves from dying out. You mentioned yes. earlier kind of the evil eye. I didn't believe in it. I thought, oh, well, these are just really paranoid people that don't want to take responsibility for their life. And my daughter and I had gone to eat at a restaurant in San Antonio when we lived there. She was just almost a year old. So we were in there and this woman, this older woman, I felt it. I felt her look at me and it felt like she punched a hole right through my aura. And I had a little Azar bead on a keychain, and it was thick. It was like an inch thick. That thing shattered into a million pieces all over that restaurant. And I got really nervous and my daughter just started crying and rubbing her face and I felt sick. And so I got home and I had a really close friend. She was from Hungary. I called her and I said, I think someone just laid the evil eye on me. And she said, oh, well, come on down to my house. And so she did a big limpia and egg cleanse all over me. And she placed icons all over me to kind of help counteract it. Well, she laid this icon on my heart space and it just broke right in half. And about seven days after that, uh, my husband and I, we lost all the money in our bank account and the lady had taken a check out of the back of my checkbook, went to the bank, cashed it and left the country. And then a fire happened in the apartment complex seven days after that. And then my husband was in an accident seven days after that. And then, um, I kind of really started working on it and paying attention to it. I was going to all kinds of healers to try to figure out what had happened and to try to get it cleansed off of me. And then stuff kind of seemed to settle down. We bought a house and the day before we were supposed to close, the house washed down the hill in a flood. It slid down the hill and into the home of another person and killed the people in that house. We had just gone by there and we actually watched it all happen. So I just told my husband, I was like, we're not doing anything. Something is going on here. And then I, I really started saying, oh God, we must be cursed. <laughs> Something really bad's happening. My, my whole family, it had ended up affecting the whole family. This lasted for about three years. Off and on, just strange stuff would happen. It was just the weirdest, crazy events that you can't explain to people. So eventually I got it cleaned because I learned what to do. <laughs> You're folks listening can do this. I connected with a woman who was in her late 80s in Georgia, and she had helped people who had gone through something similar. And um, I, she says, oh, honey, yeah, you've had the evil eye laid on you and your daughter too, probably. And so she had me start brewing really dark black pots of coffee and then setting up a warm bath and pouring the coffee into the bath why I'd say a prayer that was meaningful to me so anybody it doesn't matter what religious faith you're in you can say whatever kind of prayer and you pray over it and then you soak in that water and then you have to completely dunk yourself and you can hold your nose but then you also have to turn over in the bathtub and put your face in the water and then you have to get out and you have to air dry and i thought this is the craziest thing i've ever heard in my life it works because I started it, she says, you have to do this for nine days. And I was like, okay, it didn't really matter what time. And she said, it's best if you don't talk to anybody after you do it. And so I would just do it right before bed and go to bed. And my husband, he's like, oh, you just smell like a latte. I love you. Anyway, it did, it broke it up and it stopped happening so frequently. And then I just would do it periodically. 
when I'd felt like I was getting heavy again. I went back later to talk to that woman who who put that on me. And I said to her, why? Why did you look at me in such a hateful way that you poke a hole in, in me like that? And I just, it was almost like a drain opened and all of the goodness just drains out of you. It's just so weird. And uh, she said she was jealous of how happy I was with my baby. That's what had triggered her to look at me in such a way because she wasn't able to have any children. And I broke my heart. It was just such a sad thing for her to feel that way. And so I sat with her and talked with her for a long time. And I ended up talking to her and just the forgiveness of that. Because a lot of times when some people really will hate the person who gave them the evil life, they know who it was. And, and no, there's a lot of forgiveness that has to go on there. But that was it. It was jealousy. That is quite the story, Flora. It really, really demonstrates the power of our thoughts and our emotions. Absolutely. It made me a believer. It made me an absolute believer. I mean, I was already a believer because of esoteric study and the idea that you can change your surroundings. But then when that happened and there was just so much negativity into that and it threw me way off, I didn't want to blame that person. I just thought it was really strange. And I figured, oh, I'll do some cleanses and it'll come off of me. No. When someone builds up that much animosity in their life and then you become the target of it and if they happen to hit you in a bullseye, it's possible. I'm a believer in it. And I just never thought it would be true, but it was true. So do you think that it's important to protect yourself against something like that before it even happens? Well, and see, I did do that. I Every morning I would get up and I would wrap myself in light and I would align my chakras on a daily basis. I did everything that every textbook said that you should do, and it still happened. This is what mattered, was that I immediately went back to doing those practices. The next day, I went back to my meditation. I did my chakra alignment. I did all of those things, and I've had multiple people who are healers and shamans say to me, if you hadn't have done that, you probably would have died. You, just the, how big the hole was in just my aura and everything was so big. It just looked like I was just draining energy from the universe out behind me and all around me. And I kept my energy up. I felt fine, physically fine most of the time. But it was because I kept those things up. I kept my meditation practice. I kept my healing practice. I kept doing kala. I kept doing a lot of things that I had embraced as part of my own practice. And if I hadn't, and I had just said, well, I guess everything I've been doing is crap. I'm not doing it now. I think I probably would have gotten very sick at least. So it is worth it. It is worth doing it. You know, I do encourage my clients to create a practice of their own. Like I always, once a week, do a huge salt bath or scrub in the shower. And I ask that any obligations that I no longer need just be washed away peacefully and down the drain or any uh, things that I've agreed to unconsciously just be released and washed away and, and let them rest in peace, those types of things. I do a lot of that. I call it internal peace work. I work on creating a sense of peace within myself. And I feel bad for people who don't do any kind of practice. The thing about the evil eye is that it has a pattern. It isn't just random things. If people, I'll ask the clients that I have had that have had it when they come back, I'll say, let's count your pattern. And we start looking and it's almost every seven days, then every seven months, a big thing happens. Some of my clients have been going dealing with it for 14 years and they had a big, on the anniversary at the seven year anniversary, big, big stuff happened to them. And so a lot of work goes into clients that have had it that long, but um, it, it does exist. And it's not something that happens a lot. I mean, I've been doing this Oh, over 20 years, and I've only had three clients that truly had the evil eye on them. So. How interesting that that's where the conversation went. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. So would you say, Flora, that in general, the people come to see you because they have bad luck and they want to switch it? Maybe, maybe it's not the evil eye, but maybe it's just, you know, life is a struggle for them. Is it really people who have something specific that they want to attract into their life? Most of the time it's people wanting to attract something. 
So it is mostly that. Every once in a while, I'll get people that are having a rough time of it. And they've, they've just been shopping for someone who can fix their problem when in fact they need to fix it internally. And, you know, as a healer, and I know that you deal with this, it's part of the healing is helping the person heal themselves, giving them the space to figure it out and the right encouragement at the right time, but also fine tuning where they're looking. Cause when there's a problem, everything's a problem sometimes as a healer, you're like, Oh no, let's fine tune where we're looking because I really see this as the issue. And as much as they may fight that, they'll come to that conclusion eventually and, and work it out. But most of the time the people come to me, they're like, I really need help with a new job. And I just need someone to have my spiritual back because I've got to focus on the little details of getting my resume together. Now I have clients who are in the middle of changing jobs, like a midlife change, and they are really wanting to build their wealth. And so they'll say, I really need every opportunity to show up for me. And I'm, those are my favorite clients, every opportunity. Let's, I'm on board, let's go. And so I, I have a personal practice, and this is something I think your, your listeners would really love, is saying yes to the stuff that comes out of the blue. That's important stuff. That's really important stuff. And it really builds your luck. And um, I've made my whole family make a commitment this year. If something comes out of the blue, just say yes. Or whether or not it seems odd, just say yes, because there's something going on there that's really great. And we should, it's an adventure. I love that, Flora. That's actually how I ended up taking my hypnosis training. A good friend of mine was a trainer, needed an extra body in his course. So there were even numbers and he called me and asked me if I would be interested. And I was like, I don't want to do that. And, and I sat down and I w was picked up a spiritual book, was reading, and they said the exact same thing, that when an opportunity comes, that if you turn it down, you're saying no to the universe. Yep. I w actually went out to the garden and I pulled some weeds and I thought, what is going on here? And then I called him back and said, okay, I'll do it. And I'm one of his students that uses hypnosis the most. And I absolutely love it. Yeah. I do think that when you do say yes to those out of the blue things, your luck gets better. Flora, do you have three quick tips that people could use to actually improve their luck? Absolutely. The first is to say yes to those things out of the blue. Just sometimes you have to have faith and say yes. The second is before you overreact or assume that everyone is out to get you if you think you have the evil eye on you or something like that, or you've been cursed, stop and take a drink of water, listen to yourself, and then say, ask the question, is this true? Yeah, Byron Katie says it best, is this true? How do you know it's true? And then listen, the third tip would be ask your parents, ask your grandparents, if you still have your grandparents around, what they do for good luck what their luck beliefs are because there's a reason these have been passed down their traditions and traditions tie our luck to our life those would be the three tips fantastic thank you it's been an absolute delight to chat with you today flora thank you so much for sharing your story and your luck with us all absolutely absolutely i love it and i know that everybody's going to have great luck when they get done with this listening to you so would you like to share your contact info? Yeah, you guys can connect with me. I am goodlucklady.com. Easy peasy. Fantastic. All right. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Exploring the Mystical Side of Life. Please check out some of our other podcasts and come and visit me at thoughtchange.com. Bye for now.